Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. One of the most beloved children's show ever by the children and its adult fandom. People have grew up with this show and have grown to love it. However, some may criticise that it's bad stuff as the norm of the TV show. People have criticised that it's just an average baby toddler TV show. However, it wasn't like that before. And today, I'm going to share to you why Thomas was good, the big and thin, when it was good, when it was bad, and the history and legacy of the show, and of course, where it is today. So join me in this YouTube documentary on the history of Thomas the Tank Engine. And also, this is my first proper video, so if you like it, well, thank you very much. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel, and I hope you enjoy this documentary. Our story begins in the year 1942, for a man named Reverend Wilbur Audrey, son, Christopher Audrey, was sick in bed with measles. To keep him entertained, he and his wife Margaret kept on telling him stories, one of them Christopher really liked. The story was named Edward's Day Out and followed the story of a little old tender engine named Edward. He wasn't used very much and was forgotten about. However, a passionate crew let him have a day out and was used frequently again. Christopher would then request stories more about Edward and other characters. These stories would lead to the sad story of Henry, Edward and Gordon and many more. Margaret kept telling Wilbur to find a publisher, which he never really did until the year 1945, where he chose one of Margaret's cousins. The first railway series book was published in 1945, The Free Railway Engines. It was a huge success. Wasn't the most popular railway series book? No. But it was still a very good ch children's book for the time. That Christmas, Christopher would request a model of Gordon, just like Wilbert had made a model of Edward. However, due to budget constraints and, well, shortages of World War II, Wilbert had to settle with a little tank engine. On receiving it on Christmas Eve, Christopher would name it Thomas. Christopher then requested Wilbert to create stories about Thomas, and he did. And then the next railway series book, Thomas the Tank Engine, was published in 1946. And this book was the most popular railway series book, hence why the show was named About Thomas. The railway series continued through the years, introducing many more characters, lore, and the universe was definitely expanded upon than just the Northwestern Railway. Many new characters were introduced, and this is where most of the original stories and characters came from. It's no wonder why fans still think the Railway series is one of the best children's series books to this day. In the 70s, Christopher Audrey continued Wilbert's work and finished the Railway series in 2011. In the year 1980, a woman by the name of Britt Hallcroft discovered these stories and decided that they would fit well for TV. So, one night in 1981, Britt Hallcroft told Wilbert that she had started to work on a TV show named Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. So in 1982, she took a small loan and started the film's production. This included the director, David Mitten, the show's music composers, Mark O'Donnell and Junia Campbell, and Britt Hillcroft chose Ringo Starr, the Beatles member, to be the narrator of the first two seasons. The first two seasons blew up in the UK, so of course Britt Hillcroft had intentions of having the show air around the world, especially in the US, so Britt Hillcroft had an idea that the show would run on the show named Shining Time Station that was created by her and Ringo Starr was one of the main characters being Mr. Conductor. He would re-narrate the first two seasons with some differences for the US audience and they were put into Shining Time Station. However, when Ringo Starr left, 
The new narrator, George Carlin, who was the new Mr. Conductor also, narrated these stories for the US audiences as well. Thomas was firing in the 90s. However, Ringo Starr had finished his narrating, so Michael Angelis joined the new team, and he was a really good narrator, some people's favourites, including mine. Also, season four would focus almost primarily on the Scarlowy Railway, and I quite like that. However, some people missed the, you know, the standard gauge railway. However, they did appear quite a bit, so it wasn't that bad. Sadly, in the year 1997, Wilbur Audrey dies peacefully in his sleep in his house. The rights of the show went to Britt Alcroft and David Mitten. So in season 5, well, the show became, well, realistic and, dare I say, more darker. Now, season 5. This is my personal favourite season of Thomas. And why? Well, because it's just so action-y based. It's not just scary like people say it is, it's adventurous, it's funny, it's got very heartwarming episodes. And not only that, but the tone in this season is amazing. Of course you've got your light-hearted episodes, but you've got your scary episodes, your occasional sad episodes, and of course the infamous, well, Rusty's ghost engine. And we also see some new characters in here, created by Britt Alcroft and David Minton. Some are still using the show in present day. The biggest one being Cranky the Crane. His debut episode is also really good. Also, Cranky the Crane isn't just the only good new Britt Alcroft character. The Horrid Lorries are pretty cool too. And I love Ari and Bert's personality. And also, Bertram is really cool and adds a lot of lore to the show, like was he on the mid soda or not? And also, I have to give Rit Alcroft and David Min some credit here, because they weren't using any more Railway Series books, they were just coming up with story ideas, and some of them are actually really good. However, in the year 2000, Rit Alcroft and her team released the first theatrical Thomas film, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. However, this movie killed the franchise though. Why? Well, because not only was it not the best film of all time, and it did very badly in the box office, and Britt Alcroft had to leave her own company due to the failures of the film. That means the company would no longer be the Britt Alcroft company, it would be the Ghislaine company. The Galang Company made the next season afterwards. So let's talk about Series 6. In the year 2002, Thomas returned for his sixth season and it was actually quite good. However, Britt Alcroft was no longer working on the stories and the technical side wasn't the best. Some scenes would just be shot in 16x9 and 4x3, some would be zoomed in or zoomed out, some would be at the correct aspect ratio or some would be at the incorrect one. It was very hit and miss and I don't think the editing team did a good job of this. However, what they make up for it though is the writing. I absolutely love the writing, the stories, and the new characters in this season. Jack and the Pack. It's the Pack, man. They're really cool. I love the returning characters. The, the stories are also really good. I also am a bit nostalgic for season 6 as well. So that's one other thing. And, of course, Thomas and the Jet Engine. It, people say it's unrealistic, but I don't care. Lots of season 6 was uh, unrealistic, but it was still really fun and good. The narration for the UK dub is amazing by Michael Angelis, and the US dub by Alec Baldwin, who played Mr. Conductor in Thomas and the Magic Railroad, and in the same year as Magic Railroad came out, re-narrated season 5 for the US audiences. So there, season 6 is actually a really good season, 
and I believe that it should be looked at with more of the positive sides, like it's good stories and not something like it's visuals. In the year 2003, the Galang Company was bought by Hit Entertainment and Thomas was now owned by Hit. They didn't really do much to the UK airings of Season 7, but in the US, Hit Entertainment did some changes, like use some music from the later seasons that Hit made, which we'll get to later, and the Hit Entertainment logo, and a brand new intro that would be used for the newer Hit seasons. Season 7 Season 7 was released in 2003 in the UK and the year after in 2004. So, this season is more like a transitional season. The stories are more moral based, kind of like the later hit seasons, but I still think the stories are pretty good. The strongest feature about the season are the new characters. Emily is a great new addition to the inn, but I do think she wasn't as good in the later model seasons. There is Fergus, he has a really cool design and I love his bases and he has a good personality. There's Arthur, who definitely is a cool design. Also like Murdoch, who again has a really cool base. And of course, my favourite new character is Spencer. Spencer gives a good rivalry with Gordon that ended just recently in the show and has been around for over 14 years. Now, let's get back to the problems instead of the good things. Now, people will complain that there's reused footage. However, I can definitely understand why they use footage from older seasons because not only did they have to do a full season, they had to do a spin-off season Jack and the Sodos Construction Company and that had half a season's worth episodes so the team didn't have to do 26 episodes they had to do 39 episodes so I guess that's the reason why they used a lot of reused footage and I do do not have a problem with it however the narration from Michael Angelus does get a bit worse the only times it's bad as in like the first few episodes afterwards it's still really good however in the u.s hit entertainment got rid of the music that was made by mike o'donnell and junior campbell they used the composers of the later hit seasons and it's not very good also michael brandon is the new u.s narrator and he's my least favorite narrator his character voices are just awful and he doesn't fit well as a good narrator. So that's basically it for season 7. And this is where the good Thomas era ends. We now have to tackle the hit entertainment era. Also, from season 7 onwards, Hit Entertainment made a new logo for the show. Here are some comparisons. And also, Jack in the Pack was actually quite good. I'm not going to be talking about it here, but I might do it in another video, so make sure to subscribe to see it. So, again, let's talk about seasons 8 to 12. In 2004, Hit overhauled the team, getting rid of David Mitten and getting rid of the composers. They kept the narrators, however, they got worse. Michael and Je Jealous was still okay, but Michael Brandon still wasn't good. He might have gotten a bit worse, but definitely improved a bit later. And the show's quality went down a lot. And also the writing also went down a lot. This was the huge thing about the hit era and why it wasn't as good. However, the hit era is still home to many fabulous episodes. And people look at the hit era's lows. And I think that people should look at the hit era's great things. Like some of the good writers too. However, let's talk about season 8. I do like season 8. I think it's quite a good season. And that's why, because half the episodes are good. Some episodes, part of that good, are actually amazing. Some episodes, well, the episodes that mostly haven't been good, 
well, I just meh. There's only, like, one bad episode. And that's why I think season 8 was good. Sharon Miller didn't join the crew until the next season. And it's definitely obvious with her episodes from season 9, 10, and 11 compared to these episodes. However, season 8 did introduce having the Free Strikes formula frequently with the new longer run time, which kind of hurt the show quite a bit. Also, they used these tracking shots with fisheye lenses it's kind of weird and i don't know why they did that but overall season eight is definitely a good season not the best and it's definitely not as good as season seven and what through to one but it's actually still quite good now season nine this season is a bit of a weird one it does some things better than season 8, like its characters, but does some things worse. One of the worst things is, is Sharon Miller. This was her first season as a writer, and she's probably one of the worst writers in all of Thomas. She has written some good things like The Great Discovery, but most of her episodes written in the era weren't good ones. However, season 9 did bring back the Scar Lowy Railway with a new engine named Mighty Mac, and he's quite cool. And, but in season 9 did start a trend that would carry for the next three seasons. The Free Strikes formula continued here, but they started using more gimmicky locations. And the more bigger one is the characters. Some of the characters get, kept on not being their proper characters, like Henry and Scar Lowy. It's not as bad as in season 10, but still, the characters do seem a bit off. However, Season 9's highs are a bit higher than Season 8's. Some of the good episodes are really good. However, there's only like one or two good episodes that are really good. A few are okay, but most of Season 9's episodes are just boring. But, however, I do think Season 9 shouldn't be put up at the same level as Season 10 because it does do lots of things better than that season. So let's move on to Season 10. Season 10 is the worst hit season, except for season 12, which we'll get to later. Season 10 has a lot of problems. Most of them aren't new, but most of them that are really bad are just carried from seasons 8 and 9 and just executed even worse. The Free Strikes formula isn't really as present as season 9, however season 9 used the Free Strikes formula quite effectively in a few episodes, especially in respect for Gordon. And season 10 has 28 episodes, so it's not just 26 of the longer runtime, it's 28. And that would also continue in season 20. However, those two episodes should have been removed. Not the 27th and 28th, but Thomas's frosty friend is so dumb, and Edward strikes out, just breaks Edward's character entirely. It feels like James be wearing Edward's skin or something. However, season 10 has like one or two like good episodes, and the rest are just bad or meh. However, Sir Handel does return, which is actually quite nice, seeing as he's one of the best narrow gauge characters. And a new character named Fearless Freddy. I think he worked on the mid Sodor Railway and so do many others. And I think he adds a lot of lore to the story of Sodor. And I think I like him for that. So season 10 didn't add as many more characters as season 9. However, they were quite good. Season 11. Where do I start? The visuals. Oh my gosh, the visuals in this season is amazing. It is a piece of art. The lighting looks good. The skies look good. The models look good. The greetings look so good. The faces are excellent. The 1080p camera, I just love. These and the Great Discoveries visuals are just top notch and deserve to be credited like season 4 visuals are, and I say it rivals season 4 visuals, they just look so nice to look at. Also, the stories are now much more memorable. Sharon Miller writes slightly better episodes, and The Great Discovery is one of the best things she's ever written, and The Great Discovery was the special, voiced by Pierce Brosnan, who does an okay job, but Michelangelo would have done much better. 
And there's not really much to say about season 11. It's an improvement with some good episodes. However, some of the episodes are still mediocre, bad, and just boring. So let's move on to season 12. <sighs> season 12. Season 12 is the worst season we've talked about so far. Season 12 ha- has a lot of problems, including bad characters, not as good narration, and of course, the visuals aren't the best. I mean, the visuals look fine, but the models using CGI faces is a good idea, but it just wasn't used well. They look weird, and having the narrator do the character voices feels a bit weird. I think it would have benefited using an actual cast, like the CGI series. And another problem is using the Three Strikes formula in every episode. This is quite a big deal, and the writing definitely got even worse. So, Season 12 is the one I don't really want to talk about a lot, so I'll leave it here. And that's basically it. So, let's move on to the next era of Thomas. Now, Seasons 13 to Season 16. Or as many people call them, the Sharon Miller era. The reason why is because Sharon Miller is a new script editor and wrote basically every episode. People consider this one of the worst eras of the show. And the reasoning? Because of the terrible writing. It's not just like bad and boring and uses the three strikes formula frequently like the hit era. It includes alliteration and very unnecessary rhyming. It is very annoying and it's something that many fans will definitely criticise. However, this was removed in season 16, which people don't really say. And also, I think season 16 is the best Sharon Miller era season because it brought back the narrow gauge engines. And I think they're pretty good here. They're not the best, and there still are some bad episodes, but season 16 was an improvement. Also, the three strikes formula still is used heavily. However, it's not as bad as some of the hit seasons, but it's not as good as season nine's good uses of it. And of course, the animation isn't the best. However, Nitrogen did do a good job of doing facial expressions because I think they're very good and better than arc projections. Also, I think the characters are not as good as the ones that were introduced in the hit seasons, but there is still some good episodes in these seasons. However, most of them are very bad. But there are some occasional meh and good ones. Also, I think that the voice actors do sometimes do a good job. However, some can be obnoxiously bad. So, the Sharon Miller era is probably one of the worst eras of Thomas. In my opinion, it's not as bad as some of the other eras that we'll talk about later. In 2013, Mattel Creations bought Hits Entertainment, and when they continued Thomas, they overhauled the production team, and they brought in new people, Ian McHugh, the new producer, and Andrew Brenner, head writer. Hence why this era is called the Andrew Brenner era. This era would go from season 17 to season 21. It was definitely an improvement from the Hit era and the Sharon Miller era. The stories became really good. There were still some bad episodes, but most of them were really good. However, it wasn't as good as a classic series, and I still believe that the Andrew Brenner era could have been a bit better, but still, the Andrew Brenner era is actually really good. It's just a shame that Mattel thought it wasn't good enough, and Mattel says, oh yeah, they swapped to the new style because people weren't responding and because it wasn't easy to watch watch the unlucky tugs brother with you and you'll get a better explaining of this so let's get to the next era but before we do i just wish the show would be like the brenner era still we wouldn't be in a this situation where thomas is on the narrow ledge between life and death
big world, big adventures. BWBA or Bwaba is the worst era of Thomas and Friends. So far! Its problems are just really bad, and there are a lot of problems. The international episodes are the worst. They don't have any character developments, the characters are awful, and it doesn't even teach you stuff about their culture. The Sodor episodes are just slightly better. The animation is fine, but still, the bouncing is just weird. Or, it should be called gesturing, but you know. Also, I mean, it's really unrealistic, and I mean, that's not really a bad thing, but the way it's played out is just so weird. And, of course, the animation is sometimes okay, but on the international episodes, it looks so dull and bland. Also, the dream segments are the worst. Thomas being the narrator is such a terrible idea. I don't know why they couldn't have kept Mark Mulhagen, who did a really good job narrating the Brenner era. And, of course, Nia and Rebecca. They replaced Edward and Henry, have no better reason to do that, have barely a personality, and Nia is just a, you know, token diversity person, or engine, and Rebecca is just there to make it more gender equality. Mattel made a mistake with this, and it's only been turning Thomas into worse things as it was back in the Sharon Miller era. I thought it couldn't get worse. But here we are today. Bubba is a bad era, and in my opinion, the worst era of Thomas and Friends. If you would like more information on why Big World Big Adventures does not work and is the worst era of Thomas and Friends, check out Unlucky Tug's video, and it actually goes into a lot of detail on the things it did do well and the things that were really bad. And so I recommend you watch it. So that was it, my documentary. And hope you enjoyed it. But before you go, I have to tell you about one more thing for Thomas. There's been 24 seasons and two spin-off series. Tugs, which is a sister series kinda, and Jack in the Pack. But there is going to be a new season coming out soon. The Thomas' reboot. The all engines go. Probably will kill the show. I mean, it's probably going to fail and Mattel might end it. They could make it even worse or even or make it slightly good. But we don't know. We'll just have to wait and see.